calories, uh, Anthony? Calories? Um, I mean, that's a, a statement of, of reference. It's a unit of measurement of, of, of energy, from what I remember, and it's heat. It's the amount of energy required to heat, you know, so much of water. And what I've understood, it's just a, it's a measurement that's been used to manipulate people because a calorie from a Snickers bar is much different than a calorie from an apple. I mean, I'm just saying that's black and white. And, uh, but either, either way, you're not being told this as a regular consumer. So it's much different, you mean qualitatively different? Absolutely. Right? The number might different be... Different substance, yeah. Yeah, different substance, exactly. Yeah. Okay, so you said also that calorie is a make-believe. Yeah, it's, it's, you can't measure it. If I give you a green apple right now or a banana, you don't know... Right now you can't, you can't measure how many calories are in an apple, no matter what special machine you have, because that individual apple depending on the age, depending on where it was grown, and, and many other factors is going to affect the change of the, the apple, plus the nutrient quality of it, how much sunlight it got, I mean, the soil quality of it, just so many factors that the fact is, all this is used to mislead and misdirect people. I don't worry about that stuff. I eat until I feel like I'm, I don't need to eat anymore, and I'm pretty happy. And you go to the bathroom right after. Oh my God, yeah. If you don't eliminate within 30 minutes or an hour maximum, um, they are blocked up. You have blockage. That's what it is. Mm -hmm. So basically, your question that you said that the question people should ask is how long is it gonna stay in your body? Yeah. Right. Not how much calories, but how long is it gonna stay in my body? That's a great question. Why do you, you know why you wash your car with soap and water? I, I, I like to reference that because it's a little easier to understand. Yeah. Well, how long is the soap gonna stay on your car? You know, what kind of soap is it? Greasy soap. If it's greasy soap, it's gonna stay on your car indefinitely until you really scrub really hard. But you want something that's a detergent that you put it on there with some water and it washes itself off pretty easily, you know, just enough. And so same thing with the foods. We're so uh, involved with, you know, calories and carbs and fats and proteins and these certain nutrients. Well, why don't I ask that question? You're going to, if you're going to tell me this substance has these qualities, most substances also have qualities that are not positive for us. You know, in, uh, in detergent sakes, you have something called the MSDS, which is called the, uh, material safety data sheet. It'll show you all the toxicity of a substance. The FDA also does that for some substances itself. So if I'm gonna tell you to eat something because it's got such great nutrients and nourishment and nutrients typically refer to that if you don't eat these essential substances, you'll either wither, you'll get disease and you'll die, which is actually a lie because you can live without a lot of the, uh, the quote unquote nutrients that are being pushed by the USDA and other standards of measurement. So the way to look at it is how long is that substance inside my body and what does it do when it's inside my body and how fast will it come out of my body? I mean, that's you don't want to hire a, a construction worker to fix a house of yours or build a house and you don't want to come back and you're like, okay, I'm living in the house now. Why are you still here? Why are you guys all hanging out here? You know, making a big mess in my house. Same thing. You don't want stuff that's still going to reside. The olive and liver, the olive oil, liver flush thing, you, you drank olive oil to get healthier, you think, and, and apple juice. Well, you don't know how long it takes that olive oil to get out of your body, or if it ever gets out of your body. That's a scary feeling. It should be scary. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Think about this really fast uh, with olive oil. If, if you want to preserve something, great example, if you want to preserve something, you soak it in oil. Anchovies, you can put anchovies in an olive oil can, and you can eat it four or five, ten years later, I think. You know, oils help things preserve really well. <laughs> then why do they preserve things really well? they prevent the oxygen from breaking it down so now that you've got oil inside your body you're you in your oily substances the fats they're preventing the oxygen and they're preventing other substances and nutrients from breaking through that cell wall and giving whatever nourishment to that cell but also allowing that cell to eliminate the waste cell tissue organs whatever and, and just understand that when you have the oils inside your body you're preventing that that flow you know, why, you know, we put oil in the water with these big oil spills, you know, those fish are dying. <laughs> it's, that, that's, you don't want proof. So you that's say that proof. oil is killing humanity and oil is killing nature right now, right? Yeah, we're, we're a whole world obsessed with oil when that's crazy. We should have, if we were obsessed with water, with the quality of water, we would be flourishing. But instead, we're obsessed with, with things that kill us, with suffering us. And, and that's oil. Remove the oil, become healthier. You know, mm -hmm. you know, I'll test anybody if you want to go run with me or something. You drink 32 ounces of an oil, any oil you want, and I'll drink nothing but water. 32 ounces of water. We'll see who runs faster and longer and better, you know, recovers faster. So uh, one of the methods for you to test food also is 
just eat that substance, right? Yeah. Or drink just that substance. Absolutely. Can you elaborate on this? Yeah, I, I challenged my friends who, uh, who are really into sprouts and fats and superfoods, let's say. And, um, and I would say, listen, if you, you want to compete and see how well, let's do a study of our own bodies. Let's use a scientific method. You know, propose a theory and so forth, and we'll test it, and then we'll share our results. So one of the things I say is eat a bowl of your goji berries. Eat a bowl of your cacao, raw cacao, or whatever you want to sell, honey. And I'll eat my bowl of oranges, or water, or nothing. And I'll show you that I can have outperform, like anybody should be able to outperform a person burdened by eating nothing but a substance that just requires um, the resources of your body. You know, if you eat a dehydrated, uh, I don't want to say prune, but a dehydrated pineapple or dehydrated uh, berries and things like that, your body, it's going to require those resources for you to consume it. And when I say I test it, I mean no water. You're not allowed to drink water on your superfood. Just like if I was eating my bowl of oranges, I should not be allowed to drink any water. And based on that, you'll see that these people that drink these powdered shakes and all these things, if they had to drink the powder with no water, they wouldn't drink it. They wouldn't eat it. You know, so that's a great test. So the, the benefit the benefit of a raw cacao smoothie is actually the water that's inside the bananas. The water. The water, <laughs> yeah, the water that the water content. Because if I gave you a bunch of powder of cacao, just cacao beans, right. and blend them or whatever, and you have to eat them, you would I wouldn't vomit. eat it. I would choke. You would choke and be grossed out by it. Yeah, you're you're being manipulated by yourself to enjoy chocolate tasty stuff because of the banana, because of the water, because of the sugar of the banana. You know, so the cacao doesn't even appeal to us. Yeah, you said that a lot of times supplements are being sold to us this way, right? Yeah. Because they say drink, drink, a lot of water. drink a lot of water. I mean, you want to make a living, just tell somebody to take this pill. And when you take this pill, take a lot of water. You know, I mean, the water is always helping cleaning you out. If you had to take an aspirin with no water, that would be the result of the aspirin and you would know the truth like oh well the aspirin didn't heal me at all it was hurting me more but because it's required to drink so much water and they'll, the doctor will prescribe medicine drink plenty of water you always hear drink plenty of water eat with this food eat with that food it's because the, the drug is just poisoning you and you're you're believing that drug is helping you it's a placebo effect in many respects but just about every drug that's prescribed in supplement is liver toxic it's got to go through your organs got to go through your body and you do not know how long that substance takes. I hear all the time of people taking a medicine for their cancer and I ask them the same question, chemo medicine as an example, how long does it take for that chemo medicine to, to react on your tumor, react and help your body eliminate that tumor, let's say, decrease it, increase it, whatever. And then how long does it take for that medicine to remove itself from your body? Because as long as it's inside your body, it's gonna continue creating burden and, and trouble. Well, oftentimes they don't know. They don't know the ingredients of it. They don't know how long it's gonna stay in there. They don't know how long it's gonna take to to resolve an issue they have. And then when they ask me about the fruits, you know, eating nothing but fruits uh, and cleansing, let's say, they'll, they'll tell me, they'll ask me those questions. How long does it take for it to start working? How long does it take, how long do I have to continue doing this for? And then I ask this, I ask right back the question, well, how long did it take you? I don't know, you tell me. And I, I wanna say nine out of 10, but it's 10 out of 10 persons that tell me, well, I started experiencing results within that day or the next day. Well, no, no kidding. And then, they, then I followed up with that question and I asked them, well, if you started feeling good, let me ask you, if you start feeling good doing something, do you ever put a time limit like, well, I'm only gonna feel good until a year from now. I'm, I only wanna feel good for a month later. No, you start transitioning. For me, it's been about 12 years being on a, a vegan, transitioning to a raw and fruitarian life. And who knows what the future holds, but for right now I'm happy. And for anybody who's transitioning from their state of health to a cleaner state of health, that's how you measure yourself and, and you'll continue doing something as long as you get good results. That's, that's the goal. As long as it's fun. As long as it's fun and you're enjoying it. I mean, right. taking poisons, no, you lose your hair, you, you become ashy skin, you, your organs start failing on you. That doesn't sound fun to mm -hmm. me.